What's up YouTube? This is CJ. And Sarah. It's a Wednesday, and that means it's time for another Keto Conversations. So let's get started. Alright, so it's another week. Uh, we're at the end of January. Uh, February is in full view. We've got a birthday party this weekend. Yep, I have a groundhog. A what? A groundhog. Her yeah. birthday is on Groundhog Day. Oh, like, <laughs> we aren't celebrating it on Groundhog like, Day because the poor munchkin has to share with the Super Bowl and that's like, just not Wow, fair. we have a groundhog? <laughs> I didn't know we had a groundhog. Okay. She shouldn't have to share with a pigskin. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, she gets a little bit shortchanged every year. Yes. So. We're deep into 2020. Yes. And hopefully everyone is having success uh, with your keto diet, keto lifestyle. If you just start it, don't give up. Uh, it's not too late. Year's just starting. You can make course corrections and keep going. And hopefully this topic will be helpful. Yeah, hopefully this topic will be helpful. So what we're talking about this week is how to do keto on a budget. Uh, seven tips. We actually have actually done this before, but uh, we have it's you know been, we've it's learned been over a year. Yeah, we've yeah. learned things as we do keto all the time as a lifestyle. So the, the points may be exactly the same, but what we may say in between with regards to the point, uh, points probably will be a little bit different just because we've learned and have more experience as well. And we do get new subscribers and sometimes people will not go back and look at our older videos. So as we are continuing to get new people interested yeah. in our channel or in, in the ketogenic lifestyle, sometimes keeping yeah. the topics relevant now yeah. and we you know last week we touched on this a little bit we talked about uh one of the things we wish we, as one of the things we wish we would have known about keto when we started and that was about the expense right um and we kind of talked about that so this that's kind of where this came from we you know we it, we thought it'd be a good fit especially if you're new to oh, keto right. new to the keto lifestyle so this is how to do keto on the budget seven tips and we will get rolling with this. So number one, Sarah wrote the list down. So we're just gonna read off the list as far as the topics. Keep it simple is the first thing. Yes. So that's basically not relying on elaborate dishes daily. And that is not to insinuate that you don't want to make new creative foods or learn how to make ketogenic foods off of familiar family favorites. It's just that Sometimes those types of dishes can require extra time or extra specialty ingredients and that can be expensive especially when you're starting out. Yeah. So if you know for your basic meals you stick with simple things, meat, vegetables, um, things like butter and olive oil can help keep your budget manageable and then save maybe you know something that requires more costly ingredients for maybe once a week or on the weekends, something sure, like that. Sure. And so if we were to look at how we do keto, so we do these videos, we do a new recipe every week, but when we don't have the food from the recipe, our keto is very basic. I have chicken hind quarters in the oven yes. right now and we're having green beans with it. Yes. So it's not anything that costs a lot of money or that is super fancy. That is the way we generally eat yeah. most of the week unless we are creating a recipe. So like CJ said, although we make recipes, we do not eat those foods all the time. We mostly eat them when we create the recipe. Right. And then sometimes I will remake a recipe. Yeah, and sometimes we, right, you go back right. and Like we, we get... had chili dog casserole last week yeah. because I had extra ground beef. Yeah. Not enough for, for me to make a complete meal, but it would make the addition to that casserole. And so that's generally right. what we will do. Right. So keep it simple. Our channel is about giving you options. But again, sometimes doing those options are may, may be more expensive, especially when you're first starting out. Yes. Uh, when you're first starting out, you there's ingredients that you need to you know you may need to buy and get familiar with where to buy stuff right. from, and so keep your keto simple because even us with us doing keto almost four years now, we still keep keto simple yes. for the most part. Yes. Uh, number two is buy in bulk. So referencing what you were discussing already in specialty ingredients, things like almond flour natural sweeteners, some of those things yeah. can be a little bit more cost prohibitive. 
especially if you're starting out, you can have a little bit of sticker shock because those ingredients do cost more than if you went to Walmart and you got white flour off the shelf or, or a bag of sugar. A bag of sugar. Right. You know, a lot of times you can get those for less than five dollars. Whereas if you wanted a pound of a natural sweetener, it can be sometimes triple that price. But also keep in mind that buying in a larger quantity can help you save money in the long run and that you're not going to be using those foods in the same manner that maybe you would with the foods that we already talked about as far as white flour and things like that. You're sure. not going to be creating as many elaborate dishes with it, so you probably will not go through it as quickly as you would if you were a baker. Or sure, sure. And then, but it's also one of those things to keep in mind as far as, you know, items like almond flour, um, sugar-free chips, uh, sweet, uh, natural sweeteners. Sugar-free candy. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to include candy okay. because, I mean, candy, you can go to generally most of the grocery stores and find some sugar-free candy. Right. But I'm talking about it if you're, you know, you want to make a... Oh, I see. Some kind of, you know, if you want to use almond flour or have right. sweeteners, it's kind of like, right. the, it's it's cheaper to buy that stuff in bulk. But it's also good to know where you can buy that stuff at. So we buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon. In yes. fact, we, I think we have a truck that <laughs> just got, our, that's got our name <laughs> on it. We buy so much stuff from Amazon. I mean, literally, we probably get deliveries from Amazon probably almost every other day if sometimes some weeks every day so i think we have a truck that's designated just to come to this address <laughs> from amazon but we buy a lot of a lot of our keto products uh flowers kind of the stuff we need for our recipes we do buy them from amazon yeah and it's a better value because it's right because of the value not because we um yeah, that's it. There's no no other reason. I mean, we, and it comes to your house. And it comes so to your house. You don't, you don't so have to go anywhere. Yeah. It's convenient. <laughs> that's another but, reason. But. but we buy it because it's it's the we can find good deals on Amazon. Exactly, because I could go into Walmart right now and I could get a bag of Swerve just as throwing out a brand name for a natural sweetener. Right. But what I would pay for, you know, like 10 or 12 ounces, sometimes even nine ounces of Swerve, a brand name product, I can go on Amazon and buy a pound right. of a natural sweetener that is not a name brand, but there's lots of companies out there making them. There's, you know, Anthony's, there's uh, So Nourished, there's right. lots of brands on Amazon selling, and I've been very happy with their products. Right. But you can get a pound of the same natural sweetener and pay the same price, sometimes less. Right. So for me, it's it's all on price per ounce is yeah. what it equals out to. Yeah. So, you know, buy in bulk, shop smart. Um, although, you know, we have recognized that even, you mentioned Walmart, I mean, so we shop at Walmart mm -hmm. a lot, but we also shop at other grocery stores. But um, even at Walmart, there's more choices now for almond flour. There's more... Even in the years since we yeah, have since, done this video before. Right, there there's more options. Yeah, more and keto I, products. And I, think, and I think as keto continues to be more and more of a thing, you may see those prices drop even in stores like Walmart right. or other other uh, grocery stores. Well, and companies are coming out with generic products, like I mentioned on Amazon, but even Walmart, you know, it used to be if you wanted a natural sweetened, say, chocolate chip, for instance, you would have to spend the seven or eight dollars for a bag of Lily's chips. And now at places like Walmart, they're starting to make brands that are half that cost that are still sure. a natural sweetened product. Sure, sure. So. Again, keto is a thing, a real thing. It's not a fad. And so And manufacturers are seeing the value right. in providing companies, products. Companies are seeing that. So now we get a lot of our uh, we also buy stuff from Costco. Yes. Uh, we buy that's probably now that's probably where we get the majority of our almond flour. Right. We still generally buy our sweetener. We buy our sweetener from, from Amazon. Amazon, but we we probably get our almond flour from uh, Costco just because of the price point. And also probably convenience as well. Although we could get we could get pretty similar on Amazon, mm -hmm. but we, I mean, I literally work. You know, I could walk to a Costco from where <laughs> I work, and so sometimes it's just easy for us just to go to Costco. And we buy like our bulk nuts. We get yeah. our, our raw pecans there and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and so some some of the big uh, the warehouse stores are also a good place where you can get some of the 
the keto ingredients that you need as well. So keep right. that in mind. So buy in bulk. Uh, and then there's also places where you can get, of course, uh, what's that one place we shop at, Winco, mm -hmm. where you they actually have the bins where you can actually scoop out. Yes, the, and there are several the places. Like if you have a Fred Meyer in your area, I think a Kroger is what it is in yeah. the Midwest. Yeah, Kroger is. They Fred also Myers. have that setup where you can buy bulk food. So if you want to make one of our recipes and it requires almond flour, but say you are the only one in your family doing the ketogenic lifestyle, you could go then into one of those stores and just get enough need. for the recipe right. and then Buy you don't you feel like it's like it's a, a burden to provide something like sure. that. Keep sure. it in your budget. So yeah, buy in bulk and that's one way to save some money. Uh, number three. Fatty cuts are cheaper cuts and that is definitely an advantage on the ketogenic lifestyle as far as meat prices. So we're, we're basically going to be yeah, talking, about talking about meat prices here. Um, you know, the darker the meat, um, bone in meats, those are generally less expensive at the grocery store because a lot of people don't want to buy them because, you know, there's still fat phobia, especially in the United States. Sure. So, you know, chicken thighs versus chicken breasts, you know, bone in pork chops versus like a sirloin cut. Mm -hmm. Same with your roasts, your ground beef. A lot of people don't want like 80, 20 or 75, 25. They want like 90, 10, you right. know, they want super they lean want super ground lean, beef. Right. And in this lifestyle, of course, we want the fat. We want the fat in our meats, and that's the best way to get fat. Instead of trying to add fat into your meat, you're much better off if you just start out with a fattier meat, and usually those are less expensive. Sure, sure. So that's that's a way to save just right there, just by buying Also, cuts. you can save your bones for making bone broth, so that's mm -hmm. another way to cut costs. You can also save your bacon drippings to use in your cooking. Sure. So that's another way to, you know, be using all of your product so sure. you're keeping the costs down in that way sure and I wanted to add in this particular tip perhaps investing in things like a box freezer they are usually around a hundred dollars mm -hmm. if you feel like you could get a you know a significant amount of meat and then freeze it the other tool that I would definitely suggest that actually CJ had when I moved in with him and that is a food saver some type mm, yes. of food, you know, portion control shrink wrapping device so yeah. that especially like I mentioned before, if you were doing this on your own, of course, your family would benefit from eating this, the types of meats that you're eating on this lifestyle, even if they aren't practicing the ketogenic lifestyle is, you know, buying larger volume of meat because that brings the cost down but you want to make sure that you can freeze it and keep it fresh. And sure. a lot of times a food saving device. Yeah. And so I've had a food saver. Yeah. I probably had this about 15, 20 years. I've right. had the food saver that I have. And, and again, it has, see, I kind of grew up with parents who bought in bulk. Right. They always, they, they always you know, had the they, other generation. They can. Yeah. They, they always, they always had an extra refrigerator. In fact, even if I go to my mm -hmm. parents' house right now, they have a, I think they have, three refrigerators and three freezers uh you know so they, they buy a new one one of them goes out in the garage and one of them maybe gets hauled away but i i just grew up that way that's right. just how and so even before keto buying in bulk or buying you know you find a good sale it makes economic it makes sense. economic yeah. sense to have yeah. a place to put that stuff so when we got our new fancy refrigerator our old refrigerator went out into the garage right. And so we we try to practice that, and that's one of the ways we can you know save money uh, with this lifestyle. Yes, for sure. Yep. All okay. Right. So, tip number four: shop sales, and, and that, that goes go, along yeah, with goes what we've already discussed. Yeah. But um, there, a lot of places will send you sales circulars in the mail. You can also do things digitally, digital coupons, that kind of thing. So a lot of uh, most grocery stores are extremely competitive with yeah. what is on sale. So most stores will have some kind of meat on sale every week. And a lot of times it can help you budget if you plan your meals for the week around what meat is on sale. Sure. So that's sure. a helpful and tip. I, and I think, you know, we were talking the other day, I said, wow, we, we, and, and we don't shop ideally the way that I think we should shop. We kind of piecemeal how we shop. Sometimes um, I'll buy yeah, Daily. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're buying stuff all the time, and because I was the reason that the conversation came up is I was thinking, wow, we could do these 
uh, you know, grocery haul videos. Right. But we're going, I mean, sometimes she'll go to the store, sometimes I'm going to the store. And, and But if you planned your meals out, and that's where I was going with this point, is if you planned your meals out in advance, you probably could even save more money because you right. planned it out for the week, uh, right. even the whole meal prepping thing. Right. You could, if you even got into that as a as a a, um, a way of life, you could save significant amounts of money because, say, you made a keto chili, right? Pot of chili, you could eat off of that two or three days, and right. and and so there's all kinds of ways to save money and shopping sales. kind of goes hand in hand with the tip number three about buying. Definitely. Bulk. So Definitely. yep. So tip number five: buy in season. Hmm. So. Trying to buy things like asparagus or fresh berries, we're in the dead of winter. That's going to, number one, it's going to cost you a lot more, generally. Sure. And then it's not going to taste very good because you don't know how long it took for that product to reach your grocery store shelf because it's not grown whatever state you live in, generally. So it might have taken three or four days to reach by a truck or even airplanes sometimes, depending sure. on where things are grown. So it's going to be more expensive and it's also not going to be very fresh. So try to eat within the season, whatever the season's vegetables are producing, which kind of goes back to your initial hunter-gatherer type idea anyways, because a lot of foods would not be eaten year round. Because they weren't available. They weren't available. Right. Like, you know, berries are available in late spring, summertime. That's generally when we will eat berries sure. is during that time of year because they don't look very good. They don't taste very good. And they're expensive. And they're right. And this time of year, they're way more expensive. Right. right. So, you know, try and, and eat the vegetables that are in season for your area. And if you can't find vegetables that are in season for your area, then the next point that we will be discussing is going to sure. help you with that. So that leads into the next point, which is frozen is fine. Because as you were talking about that buying in season, we don't always buy fresh everything. So No. I mean, yes. Very rarely, actually. Yeah, we buy, sure, we buy, like Sarah said, asparagus, use that as an example. Or like zucchini. We may, we'll right, buy. we may get some of that fresh when it's in season. But a lot of times we're buying frozen, frozen items, frozen vegetables. It costs less. Yeah. There's less prep because it's already done for you. And right. a lot of times it looks way better. If you go and you look at, say, a head of cauliflower or a head of broccoli, a lot of times in the grocery store, it can look just downright awful, sometimes even rotten. And when you can just go into the frozen section and buy a bag that's already prepared and it's much less expensive. Sure. Like if I was going to buy a head of cauliflower, I'm looking at three or four dollars for a head of cauliflower where I go into the frozen section and I can get 12 ounces and it's 99 cents. Sure. So sure. obviously there's a value now, there. But now I guess that would also lead to the whole question about food quality right. and, and, and and organic this and farm raise that right. and we have always said and believed because we know that you do not have to have totally fresh vegetables and frozen is fine you don't have to have grass-fed organic gr organic products to be successful on keto you need to do what you can do and what you can afford what your budget affords exactly. now if your budget you can afford those things and you want to have those things more power to you but that is not how we had success on keto because we couldn't afford those things. So we did what we could where we were right? and uh, and it worked just fine. And you can always identify maybe a specific area that you feel, you know, that's very important to you. Sure. If there is something that you prefer that is extremely important to you, some people like to buy Kerrygold butter or sure. grass-fed beef. Yep, and that's a good point though. When we first started, mm -hmm. we were buying a lot of Kerrygold but butter. We just soon discovered that we go through a lot of butter. <laughs> yeah, we, we, but we were buying Kerrygold butter. We were buying it from Costco, and but then we well, kinda, our children eat butter too. It's not yeah. like we buy them margarine or something else, right. you know. So as as a family, we go through a lot of dairy. Yeah, and so for us, it did, it just doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, it just economically, it did make sense to just buy Kerrygold. And then we started. Yes, is there a difference in the quality? Yes, there is. Yes. We have to admit that there's a difference. Of course. But 
But again, because we use butter so much, it's just not economically feasible for us to, no. to exclusively use Kerrygold and, and everything. It's the same with grass-fed beef. I don't particularly prefer the taste of grass-fed beef. There are a lot of people who do. And if that is you, then absolutely make that your priority sure. in your budget. Maybe skimp in some other ways to provide yourself with that ingredient. I happen to prefer corn-fed corn -fed beef. But that's just me. Everyone is different. Sure. So definitely do what feels most important to you. But like CJ said, it you're going to do just fine without a pile of expensive organic or grass-fed sure. foods. Sure. All right. So well, I don't know what number we're We on. are on number seven. We All are right. on our last point. What's number seven? Okay. This is where we're going to be talking about specialty ingredients and trying to get a value with specialty ingredients. So a couple of things that we already talked about. The almond flour, buying on, you know, online, online or, buying in bulk. Or, or big box stores. Um, things can last a long time, especially if you're the only one using it. So try and keep that in mind when we're talking about specialty products, is mm -hmm. that if you buy a bag of almond flour, it's probably going to last you a long time. You might even have to keep it in the refrigerator if you feel that you're not going through it in order to keep its freshness. And we also discussed the other point about start looking for some of these foods in your local grocery stores because more and more companies are coming out with these style of products to mimic the name brand expensive ones. Sure. But the point that I wanted to mention with this particular tip is <laughs> in the same vein, watch out for products that are marketed as keto products because sometimes that couldn't be farther from the truth. Because this is such a popular lifestyle yes. and is gaining in popularity, there are a lot of companies who are putting out keto products that are full of terrible things and couldn't even remotely be keto, but they're marketing it as keto because they know it will sell. Right, right. And, and, and so that is, that is a very important tip. There's a lot of stuff now, keto this, keto that. You still need to look at the ingredients. Right. Um, I purchased some, what was it? bone broth or yes. something. I don't know if it necessarily said keto on it. I can't remember to say I don't have it in front of me, but we, when I got it from Amazon, mm -hmm. we looked at it and it was three carbs. And we for like, a serving. For a serving. And so it was kind of like, well, where are the carbs coming from? Because it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be, you know. Just powdered bone, bone broth. Powdered bone <laughs> broth. It doesn't have any sugar so in it. So we started looking at the ingredients and yeah, it was, there's other stuff in there that you know we probably don't need to have right even though it's kind of geared toward keto because then you found a similar product toward... elsewhere that's powdered bone broth and it doesn't have yeah, any zero, carbs at all right zero and tastes carbs. better tastes so better, right. once again definitely look out you know i know that um, a lot of product or a lot of companies such as slim fast and some of these other companies are putting out products that they are marketing as ketogenic right. products and they aren't necessarily number one, the best value, and number two, anything remotely close to the things that we probably should sure. be eating. Sure, so. sure. So, yes, especially products. Um, do your homework, find the best deals that you can, and um, I think if you follow these tips, you can actually save money and do keto just fine without it being a, a big burden on, on your budget. Uh, we, this is how we, um, we live and how we practice keto, and so we know it can work for you. And uh, if you have any tips that you have found by practicing this lifestyle, definitely leave them in the comments yep. below, because we, love we to like to share. Yep, we like Collective to share. brain. Sure. Uh, so this is our keto conversation segment. If you just happened upon our channel or stumbled into this channel, we do this every week, and we, we try to share information to help people with the keto diet, and folks doing the keto lifestyle. So that's what the keto conversations are all about. Sometimes we do food unboxing once a month, uh, but primarily we just talk about lifestyle, keto lifestyle topics on every Wednesday. We do new recipes every Sunday. So consider subscribing. Uh, we'd love to have you as part of our, of our keto family or keto community. And we, all, we are all about trying to help you be successful, but also helping all of our community be successful uh, on their keto journey as well. So thanks for being here. We hope that you have a great rest of the week and we will talk at you later. Bye-bye.
Peace. Peace.